and speaking before an audience and to discover speaking skills he already has and skills that need attention. Help me welcome Jesse Woodward. Thank you, Mr. Toastmaster. All members, I'd like to ask you how many copies are here? A good majority of us, or at least 50%, I think. Um, I'm a long time copy drinker. Uh, aspire to be a copy drinker when I, as young as a child. I remember it when my parents were drinking coffee, smelling it while they were brewing it, smelling the fresh can when they opened it. I thought it would be the best drink ever. And I convinced them to let me try some. I would compare it to probably about as, as good as trying Baker's chocolate. I don't know if anybody's ever tried Baker's chocolate. It, tastes, it smells very good, but it's very, very bitter because there's no sugar added to it. My first experience with coffee was about my sister. Um, I think my mom let me try it. She's an art teacher. Tea, very artsy, likes it black. My dad's a six foot four truck driver, though. He likes it with one cream, two sugars. Backwards like that, not a traditional truck driver with black coffee. But I remember thinking about how it dull this drinking coffee. Every week I would email and drink coffee. And I so wanted to be an adult. I was looking forward to it. I kept trying to drink coffee. I turned 16, I got a job, bought a car, it's on my own. I still didn't like coffee. <laughs> so I was like, okay, college, moved out of my parents' house. Moved to college, got a dorm room, living with three guys. First thing we do is we go buy a coffee maker, put a timer on it. Class, be adult, take it seriously. First two days of school, nobody woke up in time to drink any coffee. Everybody slept through the timer going off, everybody sleeps through the gurgling of the coffee machine and the smell of coffee. We all wake up just in time to put our shoes on and hike across campus to get to class. So I guess I still wasn't an adult to go to college. <laughs> Finally, my first job working in a newspaper, my major was journalism in college, and I managed to get through all of that without becoming a coffee drinker somehow. I learned to studying sometimes, going to the coffee shop, having a cup of coffee there. I, I learned a little bit of appreciation for it. More of the culture around it, the idea of relaxing and studying and reading books. And um, but I never was an habitual coffee drinker, so I still didn't think of myself as an adult, really. I was just very apt. Um, but my first job, working in newspapers, was where I really started drinking coffee. Newspapers, I don't know if you know it, they keep schedules. Despite going to college to get a 9 to 5 job, I majored in a degree where you're required to be there pretty much 24-7, 365 days a year. Every day they put out a newspaper. Now me as a designer, I would work the night shift, or at best the second shift, to produce the paper so it was ready for the pressman in the morning to get out the door. Working weird schedules like that, I had to have something to keep me going. And it didn't hurt that my manager was from Seattle was at a little newspaper in Virginia. So he knew a couple of things about coffee. He found me about coffee beans, grinders, coffee machines. That's where I learned about the French press. I'm not sure anybody's, has anybody ever seen a French press or know what the French press is? Glass beaker, basically, and you combine it. You just put your beans in there, boil some water, put that in it, makes the best cup of coffee possible. So I really got into that manner. Plus, my weird schedule meant that I was waking up later in the afternoon, usually around 11 o'clock or so, so I would make a really big breakfast and treat that as my lunch for the day. I don't think it was better than breakfast, than coffee. This is where I developed my coffee habit. This is where I became an adult. I was very happy about this. It's kind of ironic that I learned about good coffee at newspapers, though, because my next job was at the Lansing State Journal. The Lansing State Journal's coffee was not from Seattle. <laughs> Put it that way. We had a newsroom coffee pot, and without fail, at least once a month, maybe once a week, one reporter would put on a pot of coffee at about 4 or 5 o'clock. I'd come in for my second shift, and there'd be a pot of coffee boiling on the burner. By the time I left, it would be smoking, and there'd be some nice residue stuck on the bottom of the pot. So that wasn't the best coffee I've ever had. Probably the worst coffee I've ever had, though, was on, a, on, on, on my honeymoon flight. Day after our wedding, we had a late reception with a lot of people, and in order to stay awake on the flight, I ordered a 32 ounce cup of coffee. So it took us a little hop from Canton, Ohio to Boston, so about an hour and a half flight. I ordered a 32 ounce coffee, got on the plane, super tired, but I was intent to stay awake because we were flying to Paris, actually. And 
I wanted to sleep on the flight to Paris across the ocean. So I was intent on staying up at this white box, and I bought a big coffee, I sit down, um, take a couple of sips after we take off, have the tray table down, and all of a sudden my leg starts to feel a little bit warm, which is kind of weird. I wasn't really uncomfortable, so I didn't think anything about it. It didn't hurt, but it was warm enough to wake me up to my coffee laying over sideways, completely full, on the tray table, with the tray table overflowing directly into my lap. This was 30 minutes into the flight, so I got to fly all the way from Canton to Boston with a nice pair of wet pants. Luckily, though, we had a tower layover in Boston, which we did in purposely so that we could explore the city. And before our flight to Paris, I got to change my clothes because we're on a different carrier, so we picked up our, our checked luggage. Um, that is pretty much my worst cup of coffee. The best coffee was definitely in Paris, learning about Cafe au lait and espresso and how you order a Cafe Americano and not Bing Cafe, which will get you a tiny, tiny espresso shot, which is not that much better. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and that is the story of, I guess, my coffee habit at 